Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Neil Tonk, and this is my partner, Dr. Tara Ann Lee. We are assistant professors of radiation oncology at the University of Pennsylvania. In this video today, we'll be demonstrating some basic aspects of transrectal ultrasound of the prostate using a biplane side fire probe. Methods in this video may be applicable to prostate brachytherapy, transperineal prostate biopsy, transperineal placement of prostate fiducial markers, and transperineal placement of spacing gels. This will be particularly useful for practitioners interested in freehand transperineal approaches. Today's demonstration uses generally widely available tools. To our side is a BK Flex Focus 400 ultrasound with a biplane side fire probe, a Civco workstation slash sepper, simulated inanimate models prostate phantom, a 17 gauge Civco gold fiducial marker, which is unloaded for this demonstration. In addition, we have a Civco condom cover on the probe. We'll share with you some tips, tricks, and terminology we commonly use in our education process. After ultrasound is set up at 50 centimeters to allow for entire prostate visualization, we're ready. Our usual setup is to have my ultrasound to my right, but some prefer it on the left. Tauron has digitally inserted a virtual ultrasound screen on the left of your viewing goggles over the prostate phantom. I like to control the ultrasound with my left hand. We use an assistant to lock and unlock the stepper, but you can do this yourself if you choose. I'm going to insert the ultrasound probe with the buttons pointing up in midline to the patient with a slightly downward angle up until you get to the mid gland of the prostate. I prefer to insert in the axial plane, but others may prefer to insert it in the sagittal plane. The mid gland is roughly in this region and will lock to take a look. Now we can scroll through the prostate gland on the axial view all the way from the prostate base, now down to the prostate apex, which is here. We'll go back to the mid gland and discuss some ultrasound adjustment. Here's some common terminology we prefer for ultrasound adjustment. Please note there are institutional and practice specific variations, but these are common starting points to aid in discussion and facilitate teaching. When inserting the ultrasound, we insert with a slightly posterior angle. When we say that the probe is steep, that means it's pointing too much to the floor, just like this. We use the phrase shallow the ultrasound or level the ultrasound to indicate make it more parallel to the floor. Another common error is to not insert the probe midline to the patient. Generally you insert relative to the midline urethra or the D-line for grid-based brachytherapy. If you're on the midline, then you'll be off the true axial plane of the prostate. Inserting midline also helps consistency of your imaging. So we recommend if you're off the midline, you sweep the ultrasound to ensure that it is in fact midline. We're at optimal placement roughly parallel to the floor on the midline urethra. Probes that are off the midline of the patient's prostate gland will not scroll through the gland entirely. We use the term stepping in or step cranially to go towards the prostate base. We use the term stepping out or step caudally towards the prostate apex. Let's switch to the sagittal view of the prostate gland. The sagittal crystal on a biplane transrectal probe is located caudal to the axial crystal, so you must step in to view the entire gland. We'll review some sagittal anatomy. Here's the apex of the gland, and here's the base and the urethra in the middle. If it was off the midline, you would not be able to visualize the entire urethra, assuming the patient has a typical midline urethra. So we prefer it in the midline for consistency. Other terminology we like to use is rotating or rocking the ultrasound, which is rotating the ultrasound to better view a lateral aspect of the gland. In our clinic, we prefer to use the patient as a reference and always we will specify the patient as the reference point. This is rotating or rocking to the patient's left, which is the provider's right. And then this is rotating or rocking to the patient's right, which is the provider's left. And now we'll go back to midline. Thank you. The single most important aspect of transperineal approaches is knowing exactly where your needle tip is at all times. The single best way to prevent losing your needle tip is to have your needle be aligned to an imaginary line that goes down the middle of your buttons and along the probe length. We'll demonstrate needle insertion first in the sagittal plane by following this imaginary line down the center of the ultrasound buttons. We'll also discuss some common terminology. This is inserting the needle, we see that the needle is in the ultrasound sagittal plane. When we want to place the needle tip more cranial or further into the patient, we say advance the needle. 
We'll step in more. We'll step in further to see the whole gland. We'll advance the needle into the prostate gland now. When we want it removed or less deep in the patient, we'll say retract the needle. Next, we'll discuss sweeping the needle, which is very helpful if you lose view of your needle in the sagittal plane. This is an important fix for when you insert your needle not in the plane of the sagittal crystal and are not able to see the entire needle length. This happens most often because the needle and the plane of the ultrasound are crossed. This is an extreme example, but we can rotate the ultrasound until we find the tip of the needle and then the move the needle in a lateral motion to again be centered over the ultrasound buttons in that imaginary line. This is me moving the needle laterally. So we'll go back to the midline and we'll step out some more. Now we'll talk about angles of the needle, which is similar to the ultrasound probe angles discussion. When you follow the imaginary line in, the distance between the probe surface and needle entry is the true distance apart. But if you start at a steep angle, your needle will dive towards the ultrasound probe. Sometimes doctors will start at a very steep angle like this, resulting in the tip of the needle diving posteriorly towards the ultrasound. We'll take a moment to find the needle tip by sweeping the needle laterally across the sagittal plane. And here we notice that it's too steep. To fix this, we'll retract the needle and then shallow the angle of the needle and reassert more parallel to the angle of the probe, ensuring consistent distance between the probe surface along the needle length. To review the skills we've discussed so far, this is inserting, advancing, and retracting the needle. This is sweeping across the sagittal plane to find the needle tip. If a needle has a steep angle or pointing down, then you can retract and make it more parallel to the probe angle. Another key skill is finding the beveled edge. In the, this example, the beveled edge is pointing down. We see this here. If we need to change the direction of the beveled edge, we can rotate the needle and now it is pointing up. This is important for transperineal placement of rectal spacers and can be helpful for directing a biopsy gun in transperineal prostate needle biopsy. This concludes our needle insertion and manipulating primer. Now that we have several tips and tricks out of the way for ultrasound and needle adjustment, here are some considerations and tips for transperineal placement of fiducial markers. Our most common practice for transperineal fiducials is base, apex, and the contralateral mid gland. First, we'll start by rocking or rotating the ultrasound to the patient's left just off the midline so the urethra disappears from view. This helps make sure you do not put a marker in the urethra. You'll follow the imaginary line down the middle of the ultrasound buttons. If we have followed the imaginary line straight and correctly, then the entire needle will show in the sagittal plane parallel to the ultrasound probe. Our needle here is just inferior to the apex. You can advance the needle into the patient, to the base in this plane. My angle is pointing up or anterior, but this is okay for fiducial purposes. You'll deploy your fiducial and then retract the needle. Without moving the ultrasound, a cheat to put it at the apex is to follow the same exact pathway to place an apex fiducial. Follow the same path and you don't have to move the ultrasound as you did previously. Our needles at the apex advance just into the apex and retracts the bevel edge is at or near the apex if you choose, deploy and come out. Now rock or rotate back uh, the ultrasound to the midline and to the contralateral side and repeat inserting your last fiducial marker, but you can do this anywhere in the mid gland. Follow your imaginary line just off the midline Driver, advance your needle straight into the prostate mid gland with your urethra out of view. You can see the needle is not perfectly in plane here, so we'll rock the ultrasound or you can sweep the needle if you choose to find the needle tip. Here is the needle tip in perfect view, and then you can deploy your fiducial marker. Some doctors like to place their needles in the axial view. This all also may be an optimal method to drive a needle to the prostate base, and some doctors prefer it. The insertion is very different in that we do not start in the lines of the buttons. Start your insertion off the midline of the ultrasound by being lateral to the ultrasound, and you'll see the needle come into view. If you step out, you can see the needle just inferior to the apex. Now the apex comes back into view. Now you could advance into the patient. 
to do this, always make sure that you step in before you advance the needle and then watch the needle tip come into view. You'll continue alternating stepping in and advancing the needle until you ultimately finally arrive to the prostate base. This is at the prostate base, then you can deploy your fiducial here, or my preferred method is to check on the sagittal plane first before you deploy your fiducial. To check before you deploy your fiducial, you'll switch to the sagittal view. You'll have to rotate or rock the ultrasound to find the needle in the plane of the sagittal crystal, and then you'll have to step into the patient because the sagittal crystal is caudal to the axial crystal in biplane ultrasound probes. Then you can deploy your fiducial and you have direct vis visualization while you do. The final tip is for fiducials for patients receiving robotic stereotactic body radiotherapy. In robotic SBRT, the fiducials need to be lateral and anterior in the prostate gland. You can see this here. Also, they have to be mostly in a box-shaped pattern. To do this and ensure lateral and anterior placement, we start by rotating or rocking the ultrasound to the ideal lateral position. You can also do this for non-robotic SBRT patients. So here we've rocked the ultrasound. Then you follow the imaginary line into the prostate gland. This ensures that you're lateral uh, in the gland to start with. Again, remember to generally insert parallel to the probe length to make sure that your needle path is not too steep. If I want my marker this lateral, I'll start with the ultrasound uh, already rocked to the correct laterality, and then I'll insert parallel to the probe length until the needle comes into view. Here's the needle coming into view here. This is not as lateral as I would like, so I'll retract the needle and then I'll reinsert the needle further lateral. Now it comes into view, and then for our practice, this is a perfect position. You can choose to advance the needle in the axial or sagittal plane as you wish, but you might have to make some fine adjustments. Now we'll verify the correct uh, laterality and adequate anterior placement by switching to the sagittal view and stepping into the patient. Here's the needle sufficiently lateral and you can see how far off the midline we actually are by rocking back to the midline and away. If we use twin line markers, you need to have about two centimeters of space past the needle tip to deploy, depending on the model that you are using. If you're using individual fiducials, you can use the same needle track for the superior and inferior lateral markers, just making sure to follow the same needle length to get that box shaped pattern. We know that the first marker was roughly this anterior, so we will rock or rotate to the contralateral side to get the second marker roughly on the same anterior plane. So now that we've identified our plane, we'll follow our imaginary line into the patient, again, roughly parallel to the probe length. Now the needle's in view, you can see that this is sufficiently lateral and anterior needle placement. Then we'll switch shortly to the sagittal view to verify laterality and anterior placement. Once we switch to the sagittal view, again, we have to step in with the stepper to visualize the entire needle. We see that were sufficiently lateral and anterior in the prostate. These are several tips and tricks for fiducial placement. Thank you again for joining us.